Welcome to the London School of English Life. Uh, in our session today, our expert trainer, John Dyson, will talk about why games are a useful tool for learning the language. You will discover games you can use to improve your English and participate in interactive quizzes. Uh, here with us today, we also have Silvia Cupini from our sales team, who will share her advice uh, on the topic as well uh, in our Q&A session uh, at the end of the live stream. And uh, before we start with the main content, uh, Sylvia, over to you for a few words about our English courses. Good evening, everyone. Um, so yes, the London School of English is still offering uh, a large variety of courses, both online and face-to-face. -face. Um, uh, we have been praised for the variety of nationalities we've had in our um, uh, centre in London. Every year we welcome more than 70 nationalities and in the last few weeks, uh, we've had between 20 and 30 different nationalities coming to us every week. So um, it's great to see so many different people um, uh, still willing to come uh, to train with us at the school. Uh, so if you are around London, uh, please pop in for a chat. It'll be great to kind of let you know what we can, how we can help you with. Or um, if you are um, uh, interested in online training, just uh, keep in touch, send us a message even on the chat and I'll be very happy to arrange a consultation on Zoom or on a call. Great, thank you, Sylvia. And uh, I would like to welcome uh, all our viewers who are joining us. We've got uh, one of our alumni, Frank, uh, who's already saying hello. Uh, Ali uh, is saying hello. Hello, everyone. and. Uh, now over to John for the main content. Thank you, Olga. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Frank and Ali. Nice to have you both with us today. Um, welcome to another live stream from the London School of English. My name is John Dyson, and I'm, I'm one of the trainers here. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us this afternoon on our live stream. Um, today's subject is using games to learn English vocabulary. Uh, so that's the title. I wouldn't just limit it to vocabulary. Though. I think obviously you can learn, you can use games to learn other aspects of the um, of the language. You can learn vocabulary, and with apps, you can also um, practice your pronunci pronunciation. Because many of these apps, which we'll look at later, um, actually in integrate uh, an audio uh, capacity, which means that they will pronounce the word. Well, artificial intelligence will pronounce the word for you. So let's begin just by setting out a few ground rules for a good um, English vocabulary game. So what are the ground rules for any game when it comes to learning vocabulary? Well, first things first, an English learning game should be accurate and effective. All grammar structures that it uses should be grammatically correct and all vocabulary words and terms should be spelt and defined correctly. If there are any problems or inaccuracies in the game, it's better to avoid that game. Using a game with problems like these means that you'll end up learning incorrect information. So as always, look for a game that's highly reviewed and has impeccable English. And if you want to get reviews, just put in the name of the game in your search engine and put reviews after it, and it'll give you some kind of indication of what people think of that game in general. So that's the first thing I'd say is important. Um, I think the second thing is that these games, whatever game you choose, should help you to learn new words and expressions. It should really help you. Quality games will help you to remember meanings of difficult words and perfect your mastery of grammar patterns through a combination of using such features as word association or images and repetition. So that's the second thing. So we've got it should be accurate, it should be helpful, and of course, as with any good game, a good English game should be fun. It should be fun, it should be entertaining, and it should be engaging. It should entertain you as you play it. Some of the best English games are those that make you forget that you're actually learning. 
Of course, what I think is fun might not be the same as what you think is fun. So it's important to always look for a game that is directed with your interests, that aligns with your interests, while also targeting the English that you want to practice. So having done that short introduction about the ground rules, let's say, for a good language vocabulary learning game, let's move on to the second part where we're going to look at um, that basically we're going to look at two types of games. So the second part will look at the classic games, which you can play either online or offline. Um, and the third part of the the, the uh, live stream will be talking about digital games, just a couple of digital games that are really good for helping you to learn vocabulary and are also very motivating and good fun. So let's start with what I've called the classics. Now, there are certain classic games that you've probably played in your own language, which are perfectly adaptable to uh, learning English vocabulary. The first of those is Scrabble. Yes, it's a very, very famous game worldwide. And basically, the rules are that you have to come up with words on your set of tiles, which you can see in the picture, and each tile has a letter. And at the beginning, you take seven tiles and you try and um, create a word when your turn arrives. However, your word has to connect with another word already on the board, horizontally or vertically. Just like you can see here, you've got back, school, to, learn. You can also make words which are also already present on the board longer. So um, just an interesting statistic, actually. Apparently, roughly 60% of homes in the United States have Scrabble. And around 50% of British households have a Scrabble game somewhere. So it's an incredibly popular game. And, of course, there is um, an electronic version available. So you can play that across continents with your ex-classmates or friends who want to mm -hmm. their English vocabulary. Now I put a gap in the word there, yeah. Uh, you, you have to decide what that word is. So I've got a little Scrabble type uh, test for you. You're going to see uh, the letters of the word all mixed up and you have to try and decide what that word is. So this is for friends or classmates who want to mm, their English vocabulary. So what's the word that could fill that space in the sentence? I'll give you a synonym. It means to make bigger. To make bigger. And it begins, I'll give you the first letter, it begins with E. Either of you know, let's see. Anybody know the answer here? Let's see. I'm going to have to give it to you so we can crack on. Okay, the answer is expand. Yeah, so you can use it to expand your English vocabulary. Right, let's move on to the next game. The next game is another one which you've probably heard of. It's called Taboo. Uh, taboo is similar to the game of charades, which is where you have to act out a film or a book or a song or a play. But um, the goal of it in this case is to try and get your teammates to guess the word without showing one of the five words which you see on the cards that you need to play the game. So it's a good way, this is a very good way of forcing you to describe a word or expression without using the typical words which you might use to define it. So it's very good for advanced learners. So it's a really good way to help you expand your vocabulary because it makes you more inventive. It encourages you to be more inventive in how you give a definition. So let's take an example. So normally taboo is played with cards a bit like the one you're going to see on screen. Here we go. So which word at the top? And you can see it's two words. The first word has five letters and the second word has five letters. And you cannot use the following words. Camera, touch screen, essential, iPhone and multipurpose. So which word or term am I thinking about there? 
It is something which we cannot do without in our day to day lives. Well, we can do without it. But in fact, if you make people leave theirs at home, for example, or they lose it, it's like a catastrophe has happened. Many people say, what did we do before we ever had this particular thing? Now, the answer, which I'm going to give you, if, unless anybody wants to come up with a guess at the answer. The answer here is smartphone. Yeah, smartphone. Now, the clue, actually, you also had there was iPhone, but um, should have put Galaxy in, shouldn't I? Anyway. So that's a good example, another good example of how we use the, the, the game taboo to develop our English uh, vocabulary more. The third classic game is crosswords. Well, the crossword is, is perhaps one of the oldest games of all time. And as you know, you get clues or hints which either go across or down. And we'll take... Um, Um, hi, everyone. Uh, it looks like uh, John's connection might have uh, been interrupted, and I'm sure that he's joining us uh, soon in the um, uh, in the chat. Uh, meanwhile, we've got uh, Sylvia here with us, who also has plenty of experience uh, uh, advising clients on on their English classes and English learning. So, Sylvia, uh, what's your uh, what's your opinion about uh, while we're waiting uh, for John to uh, join us back? Uh, what's your opinion about uh, using some of this um, in uh, games in games, classes uh, in classes? Yeah. Um, well, I in my experience as a uh, as a teacher, I uh, I think that. Um, um, I'm not going to go into very technical terminology, but to actually uh, have a safe and relaxed and even fun environment can actually really help in terms of uh, language acquisition. So games that can be done in a group, even perhaps at the end of a session, it could be actually quite fun to recap all was learned. And, uh, and again, really, it really sticks to you when something is done in a more social and fun way. That is my experience in terms of games. So I think there should, no matter what the the topic of the conversation in class is, um, I think a five minutes game at the end is always uh, is always fun. That's great. Thank you, Sylvia and John. Welcome back. Uh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> to have you back, uh, here, and uh, uh, we'll we'll continue with the main content, and then get back to uh, talking about games and uh, different methods of learning English later in the Q and A session. Okay. Thank you, uh, Olga, and thanks, Sylvia. I was just getting to the examples. I think in the crosswords, I was going to say, okay, here's the first example, which is an easy example, actually. Um, the clue is the best known dish from Italy. Uh, it's not too difficult. Although, having said that, it's got five letters in there and it could be one of two options. What I've put, well, first of all, let's see if you can tell me what you, if you have any idea about what this is. Oh, by the way, Frank, well done. You got the answer right. Mobile phone. The last one I called it a smartphone, but mobile is, although well, be careful because mobile is spent with an E at the end of it, but uh, you got the right object. Okay, getting back to the best known dish from Italy, I put the answer pizza. Although it could be pasta as well. But that's a, a, an example of a, what we could call an ambiguous clue. Okay, well, uh, well, it could be pasta. This is Santi Lazaro who's, who's um, joined us. It could be pasta. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah, and welcome Palavi from India. Nice to have you with us as well. Okay, let's go on to the next uh, example. And the next example, again, it's not too difficult. This is a black and white striped animal. A black and white striped animal. 
what's that? I'm not going to give you any more clues because there's only one animal that's black and white that has black and white stripes. A tiger has orange and black stripes, but that's not quite the same, is it? It's a black and white striped animal, which actually looks quite similar to another animal. Hmm. So the answer to that, let's see if anybody can get in there with an answer. Oh, I can see you all frantically typing across the world to try and get your answers into me. A black and white striped animal is a zebra. There you are. You've got the first letter given to you there. Let's move on to the third one. This is a little bit more difficult and it's rather more um, attached to a particular theme. So the clue here is the document you receive before a business meeting. It lists the subjects you are all going to talk about. And we will see the spaces now, as you can see, in a, in, a, um, uh, in a crossword, of course, as you complete the crossword, then you are getting letters which you've filled in from other words. So let's say in this case, you've got these two letters because you've already found another word with a G in it and another word with a D in it. So remember, I said it's the document which you receive before a business meeting or you should receive. It lists the subjects you're going to talk about in the meeting. And the answer is, the answer is agenda. Okay, an agenda. That's right. Okay. And the next one is, again, getting a little more difficult. Complete the sentence. Thank you so much. I'm very mm -mm -mm, for your help. I'm very mm -mm -mm for your help. Well done, Di Diana. You put agenda. Frank, you got, you got zebra. Yeah, that's good. You're all doing well here. Agenda. So this one, D, uh, thank you so much. I'm very mm for your help. What could it be? A word that begins with G. Okay, let's see if anybody can send me the right answer to this. Yes, Sandy, well done. Yes, well done, Abdur Azouf. You put grateful. Okay, yeah. So the spelling, well done, Sandy, well done, Diana. Grateful. Yeah, excellent. And one thing as well, it helps you with your spelling, actually. That's another very important point to remember. So I can see, because for example, you know, we can spell great in two ways, can't we? Because the G-R-E-A-T or G-R-A-T-E as in this case. And the final example, which is the most difficult example, I would say, is this is an adjective to describe someone who is very, very good at something. For example, speaking English or using Microsoft Office or driving uh, a truck or a lorry. So we'd say this person is very and I made it more difficult actually this time because I don't think you have any letters there in the um, the spaces. But that is the number of letters that you have in the word. So there are 10 letters in this word. And I'll give you a little bit of a clue just to help. Um, the first letter is P. The first letter is P. And if any of you know your Cambridge English exams, um, it's also the name of the Cambridge English exam, the most difficult. Well done, Diana. Well done, Santi. Yes, you've got it perfectly right. It is proficient. Yes. So I'm, uh, you know, he's very proficient at speaking English. He's a proficient, proficient English speaker. Well done. OK, so that's the correct answer. So we've looked at Scrabble, we've looked at crosswords. Let's look at one more, which is Pictionary. Now, Pictionary um, is another of those games that you may have played with your family or with friends uh, in your own languages. So basically, all you need to do is um, to draw the word that you have on your, your piece of card. So objects, tangible objects like bus or book or ball, and so on, those are easy to draw. Less easy and requiring a little more imagination are intangible um, words. For example, life or work, but with a bit of imagination, you can do it. So the way you play the game is that you need one person who is a drawer or a sketcher and another person who is the guesser, let's say. 
it's really good fun a lot of good fun uh, this game because of course it does depend to a certain extent how good you are at drawing let's have a look at um a couple of examples so the first one um what's this this is that is a pretty good drawing actually so what's this drawing meant to represent i think i, I would have probably added another draw i'm cheating but i can't draw directly onto the screen unfortunately i would also put a drawing of a um maybe a, a, a church or a, a mosque or you know something um a place of some kind so what word do you think this is what occasion are we talking about well ali nice guess ali abdi you put a married couple that's the outcome of this particular occasion or ceremony it's actually referring to a ceremony and i am cheating by using words i should really be drawing but um um it's not possible so let's see not a married couple the answer is a wedding a wedding that was the picture okay so that is sort of let's say that's an abstract one let's have, have a look at another example similar theme what does this picture indicate one of those universal i think uh, images that crosses cultures certainly i think this uh, symbol is very much something which is recognized around the world and let's see does anybody know what it might be it's what we all need more of in our modern lives not enough mm, and a bit too much hate at times it's like the opposite of hate so the answer to this one the answer is love as the beatles said all you need is love so we've looked there at three classic games that can be adapted to help you with your vocabulary we've looked at uh, scrabble we've looked at crosswords and we've looked at pictionary uh and we of course we've looked at uh, taboo so now let's move on to a couple of digital games and apps um first of all digital vocabulary i mean how does it work well in fact um if it's not a particular specific set of vocabulary that you're trying to review then i would say you know you can find numerous online quizzes to help you learn english so if you just say alexa play a general knowledge quiz in english welcome to the general knowledge quiz alexa stop been... So actually it's a bit rude to talk to alexa like that but um that's she she will do that if you ask her you have to change your alexa to english obviously which you can do and you can easily change it back afterwards so yeah we've got um you, you know just a quick thing a, the word a quiz refers to the game a quizzer refers to the person who likes playing the game and we even have a verb to quiz yeah so let's play a quiz you're a great quizzer and i really like to quiz in my free time which i actually do actually i prepare quizzes for my family at christmas i shall be preparing one uh, in the next couple of weeks to use on christmas day with my my family and finally i just wanted to mention as i said that's one option for you now a couple of games two games which are based on apps which make, and both of these make uh, vocabulary learning really fun. The first of these is called Quizlet. Uh, Quizlet is a really good study aid. Um, it works on the principle of uh, flashcards. And I believe there is another app called Flashcards, which is kind of a competitor. So I'm not recommending one or the other, but they're both, this is the one I happen to use um basically what it is is it's based on the principle that you will see on your screen you see a definition of a word or an example of a sentence with the word missing and then you can guess it and then you can flip the card over now the interesting thing about quizlet is it gives you lots of different ways that you can play the game 
So you can either you can you can learn the word by seeing the word and the definition at the same time. You can do the flash card, which is more like a, a game. You can also uh, do it by writing the answer in. Um, you can spell the word by recording your voice. Uh, and you can, I'm just looking to see what I can say. Uh, you can match. So that's quite a good one. If you, you still need a little bit of help, you can see lots of different words on the screen in little boxes. And then you will see the definitions in other little boxes. And all you have to do is drag one box onto the other box. So it's really good fun. And it, it's very motivating. And the thing about this is you do need to do a little bit of work beforehand. Um, you can find a lot of ready-made vocabulary sets. But the good thing about this is if you go to the website first, you can make your own study sets. So if you want to study, let's say, 20 words or terms connected to travel, then you can look through your vocabulary notes and say, OK, I want to learn that word, that word, that. And you can enter them in and then it creates the quiz for you. It creates a study set for you. So um, I think this is, this is very effective in terms of um, getting you to work on anything that requires on your memorization. And I mean, at the end of the day, when it comes to vocabulary, unless you have the opportunity to practice um, on a daily basis, then you're going to have to try and use your memory to help you learn. So I think these kinds of games make it more fun to use your memory for learning. So whatever you're trying to remember, rather than um, it, it'll give you a um, Plenty of exam, ex, um, advanced sorry features, and Quizlet is a really good tool. I would really recommend it for students, learners, or anybody looking to learn. And it's not just about learning vocabulary, but in this case, I've used it a lot with my students, and um, they they really like it. They find it very motivating, and it's a phone based app. So basically, you can. The other good thing about it is you can use it anytime, anywhere. Of course, that means if you're on the train or you're waiting for a bus, whatever it might be, you have a spare five minutes, go to one of your study sets and say, okay, let's see how I, how many I can remember. So let me give you a, um, a couple of uh, examples. Um, so we've been doing rather than one quiz all at the same time today. We're doing little mini quizzes throughout. So this is um, words connected to um, holidays and travel. And the first one, let's see, so you would enter a definition and the, end, the definition would be the opposite of arrival. So what is the opposite of arrival? What's the term you're trying to review here? The opposite of arrival. I'm going to give you the answer. It begins with D. And the word is, the word is, still waiting to see if anything comes through. The word is departure. Not a very difficult one because if, ever, if you've ever used an airport, normally most airports tend to have that in English as well as in the local language. Let's try one that's a little bit more tricky. This is the definition, and it's, it's very culturally specific, this one. This is a typical British family-run guest house. Well done, Diana. You got the answer, departure. That's good. This is the definition. A typical British family-run guest house where you get a room and the first meal of the day included in the price. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's a very, very typical British thing. You hear a lot of visitors. I heard a lot of my learners and course participants when they visited England, they often say, well, it's a reasonably economical way to travel around the country. If you're only staying one night here, one night there, then I normally find a room in a mm -hmm. and um, people are friendly because very often it's their own houses they're using for this little business. OK, the answer is. Remember, you get somewhere to sleep and you get the first meal of the day, bed and breakfast. Well done. B&B. &B from which the company got its name, Airbnb. And the last one, again, connected to travel, the verb which describes when you get onto a plane or a ship 
What's the verb we use to describe when you get onto a plane or a ship? Let's see if anybody knows that. Actually, I'll, I'll run through the answer because uh, time is sharp here. So the answer is to board, to board. Okay, so we've seen departure, bed and breakfast, and board. And that's just an example of three, three terms that I've chosen thematically corrected, uh, which can help you to, to learn vocabulary. I would say, if you're making a study set for yourself, I think 20 is about maximum number, because you can get through those in about five to 10 minutes. And it needs to be short and motivating uh, rather than making one with 50 different terms in it, which will take you a little bit longer. And the, the other game I would like to mention is called Kahoot. That's a very strange name, but Kahoots are basically, they're used uh, worldwide, used by teachers as well. They're very fun, interactive games that help learners to practice their English and, and build language skills. Um, you can find lots of free cahoots on the site, which include all sorts of things like music and images to help learners to remember words. Um, and this is an example of what it looks like. Now, you need one person who is, what could we call them, the cahooter, who actually uh, administers the, the, the quiz from um, uh, their, their computer. And then the other people in the game uh, work on the basis of using their smartphones. And as you can see, for each question, you have four different options and each option has a different color. And all you get on your smartphone, you have to enter a code for the game and to be included in the game. And when you enter your smartphone, uh, you, all you have to do is press the right color box on your smartphone screen. So for example, in this case, who invented the light bulb? Um, it was Thomas Edison. So you would press the red box on your smartphone screen. So it's really easy. It works on the basis of multiple choice and you'll be able to see scores coming up. So it's very competitive. Now, this this um, principle is used or this, this, this app is used by a lot of companies. It's used in training sessions. It's used in presentations and meetings. But you can get a you can get a, a very simple account, and you can use it to, to to set up your own simple quiz. In fact, this is the one I will probably be using this Christmas, seeing as I have family members scattered all over different parts of England. Um, so everybody can join in. All they need to do is log on with their phone with an internet connection, and from a distance, you can have great fun. So again, it's something you can meet up with your ex classmates and say, okay, once a month, let's. Let's have a little vocabulary game and see who's doing what the best at remembering their vocabulary. Very, very motivating. OK, so a couple more examples to end with here. Um, let, let's have a look. So after the meeting, Helen wrote the mm and sent a copy to us all. So you've got the red answer would be hours, the blue days, the green minutes or the yellow seconds. So which color button should you press? After the meeting, Helen wrote us, wrote the mm and sent a copy to us all. So all you need to do is choose the right color. Palavi, choose a color. See if you can put in which one is it? Which color does the correct answer refer to? Is it red or blue or green or yellow? Well, I'll tell you. The answer is green. Yeah, the green button is the right one in this case. So let's take one more example. The mm in Washington between the Americans and the Chinese about weapons control wasn't successful. They couldn't reach an agreement. Oh, I think that's my mistake. They couldn't reach an agreement. Yeah. Okay, that should say couldn't rather than could, but... Uh, so you've got four options. Again, the mm in Washington, and you've got red, blue, green, or yellow. Red is negotiation, blue is argumentation, green is fight, and yellow is debate. You should press the red button. So the red button will give you the answer, negotiation. 
So you can see how it works. So you don't even need to write the word in when you're doing this, but it's much more fun if you're playing it with other people. Try it with your family this Christmas and see what you think. Okay, so those are basically I, the, the two principal digital games that I wanted to mention in terms of um, learning vocabulary through playing games. And I simply, as a, as a conclusion, I would say, look, you know, learning vocabulary is good for you. Playing games is good for you. It helps reduce or alleviate depression, apparently. It alleviates insomnia and it reduces your stress levels. So you can learn vocabulary and keep healthy as well because it makes you happy. And I think very often we're all quite competitive even if we're not competitive with other people, we want to be competitive with ourselves because we want to do as well as we can. So hopefully this little talk has encouraged you to, um, uh, or inspired you even, to think about how you can use games to help you learn English or to help you review what you want to remember. Because the more words you have, the more power of language you have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John, for this very interactive uh, live stream. And uh, it's good to know that vocabulary uh, learning can be so much fun and is not only good for improving your English, but actually also for uh, uh, to to help us alleviate our mood and uh, fight with the uh, fight with uh, symptoms of stress as well. Uh, and um, um, I would like to uh, say thank you uh, to our participants. Um, uh, we've got uh, lots of uh, great answers to quizzes. Uh, we actually have one question from Palavi, uh, who's asking us uh, about uh, about game recommendations. So I guess um, I guess uh, maybe what's uh, meant here is that there are so many of those. Uh, is there any uh, many games? Is there any game that's better than uh, the rest, or uh, what would you say, John? I would say Quizlet, um, the, the, the app, because you can take it with you anywhere and you can play it by yourself. You don't need to be with other people. And there are lots of different ways of playing it. So I'd say that's maybe the most um, versatile because you can play Scrabble by yourself. But it's not quite the same as playing against another person. So, yeah, if I had to choose one, I would choose that one. Great. That's a uh... Great answer. Sylvia, I know that you also have a lot of experience uh, uh, with, uh, you know, advising our clients or uh, improving their English. So uh, what what do you think? Do you well, have any other games to add uh, to the mix? Yeah, um, well, I, I I agree with John that I think games is a very nice and uh, a way to not only learn your vocabulary, you know, revise new vocabulary, it's just, it's, it is very a stress-free activity. And what a great way to actually, I don't know, travel by, well, obviously we in London travel a lot by public transport, use the time to actually, you know, have a bit of fun while traveling. But um, we, um, and I, uh, we also, I mean, what I tend to do for people who contact us, they're, they're perhaps a little bit more determined in kind of learning the language very quickly. Um, uh, the London School does offer a, an app, which, uh, uh, sorry, a platform, which perhaps isn't game, but is a very nice way in terms of self-study. Um, uh, for some, could be quite entertaining. Some exercises are kind of gut feel, perhaps not quite like Scrabble, not quite like the activity that John talked about it but I do I do find them fun you know I do find that kind of matching activity quite interesting and kind of gameish like you know you do get to to see the answers perhaps that uh, uh, that's uh, quite popular too great uh, thank you uh, thank you both yeah I would add I, I, I agree absolutely with Sylvia I mean there's this this um phenomenon nowadays in businesses, companies, whatever, called gamification, which mm. is a way of kind of making tasks, which could be a bit boring, make them more like a game because young people in particular nowadays grow up with video games and online games. So their brains are hardwired to that element of fun and competitiveness 
and, and you know, and testing yourself. So I, I think it's, um, you know, it's a very important aspect of modern life. And I also agree with Sylvia when she was said earlier, when I disappeared for a little while, I think she was saying it's a very social and fun aspect to playing games. It's not something we associate with the really serious business of learning. So I think it can break down certain psychological barriers when you know that you're only playing it, you know, only playing a game, but you're actually getting something useful and positive out of it. Yeah, I guess in second language acquisition, there is a lot of theory of creating a relaxing environment in the classroom. And very often teachers, you know, do have a very quick, fun game at first to what we so we say lower the affective filter to make everyone in the class a bit more relaxed, have a giggle before going into school let's call it more serious work so yeah gaming has a very i think a very important uh, uh um a function in in a, in a classroom mm -hmm. online right. or face to face yeah. yeah thank you um thank you sylvia and uh i've got another question um that kind of follows up uh from it but um uh, i'd also like to call out uh sandy lazaro uh who's joining us from mexico today uh and uh, he's saying, thank you very much, John. The games were great. I didn't know about Quizlet, but now I'll use it. Good to That's hear, great. Sandy. Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. Perfect. And uh, uh, John and Sylvia, can you tell us a little bit more about how we use uh, games in our classes, uh, both uh, in our uh, London Center, face-to-face, -face, and also online, um, a little bit more on, uh, about yeah. this? and. Uh, uh, Maybe also uh, if you could add uh, about uh, uh, if you could add um, um, and talk about uh, other methods that we use to uh, help clients build uh, their uh, vocabulary. Yeah, I'll, I, I'll, I'll take this to begin with. Um, we use our, at the London School of English. A lot of the teachers, then all of them, I think, use um, role plays. And if you talk to a learner and say, we're going, to, we're going to do a role play, the course participant will typically say, oh, it's, it's like a game, isn't it? And I'll say, well, yeah, it is like a game. You don't have to necessarily take it too seriously. All we ask is that you follow the instructions on the piece of paper referring to the character that you are playing. But it is a form of game in a sense. And what it helps them to do is if we give them sufficient information on the card, um, it usually inspires them to perform and to use the vocabulary perhaps more than they would be doing if they were simply doing a vocabulary exercise where they're filling the gaps or they're having a discussion. So it's another, obviously discussion is another good way of generating and practicing vocabulary. The, the important thing about vocabulary is to practice and we really put a very high premium on practicing activating that vocabulary in our classes so the games we've talked about uh, you know the outside class in that sense um you know for post class for consolidating vocabulary but those kinds of things where we can create a kind of role play game in a particular situation really useful for for activating and encouraging course participants to use that vocabulary great Sylvia, uh, or language in general. So time, yeah. sometimes, sorry, yeah, sometimes games are so, games or role play are so well designed that, um, you know, some, uh, from from the eye of a of a teacher, you can see how well designed and guided they are. That they're really forced in a more subtle way to use the language. They're very they're very well well done. And I, I guess most people, even the most uh, the top end uh, um, CEO, will notice at the end of the activity say, "Oh, actually, I have used what I've just uh, learned in a very natural in a very natural way." Yeah. Yeah, they're very they're very well designed those role plays. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've used them. I've used them in business classes as well. Because I mean, not only in general English classes where it could be a situational thing like uh, dealing with a travel problem, for example, but in a business uh, English class context, doing something like uh, a role play where they assume a character, or a simulation where you say, "Okay, you are." 
committee of four people. Here are three problems. You have to discuss them. And you are pushing them in the direction of using the, the appropriate vocabulary for doing that. Uh, so, yeah, games and simulations. Yeah, and I think it's very important to do that in a safe environment like the classroom. Yeah. So doing that in, let's say, kind of artificial context, it kind of it relaxes you a little bit and you're safe. You know, you can make mistakes. It's not the real world. And uh, and you can really try even language that perhaps you want to check whether it works or doesn't because you know the teacher will be there to uh, comment or correct and you know expand on uh, on your language yeah i think yeah absolutely yeah that's absolutely. that's great to know that it's uh, applicable not only in general english but also in business english uh setting and um uh, and i guess particularly uh, uh in case of business english practicing this uh this skills and uh uh, using different different formats, even including telephone calls, uh, yeah. video conferencing, uh, uh, as well as face-to-face -face classes and kind of sim simulating particular business meetings uh, is uh, very useful. Yeah, because they're, they're very skill-specific. It's like you say, you know, most people want to learn how to uh, maybe negotiate more effectively in English, how to participate in meetings or run a meeting how to work best on a Zoom call or on a telephone call, how to write better emails. And all of those are dependent on, on vocabulary in order mm. to be really effective because they all have their own kind of little vocabulary sets which are specific to those uh, skills. Yeah. That's but in general, true. I mean, you know, general English as well, it can, you can choose a multitude of themes where you say, okay, learn 20, 30 words connected to this particular theme whether it's the environment or travel or sport or entertainment, for example. Mm. Great. Thank you, John and Sylvia. And uh, on that note, I would like to mention that uh, our next uh, live stream would be focused on specifically on business English. So uh, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, uh, then please join us and uh, you will uh, learn uh, very uh, many uh, useful expressions um, for your business English as well uh, on that note i would like to say thank you very much john for this for creating this fantastic content for the live stream and for uh for sharing uh your tips and advice with us and uh thank you uh sylvia uh, also uh very much for uh joining us and for sharing your perspective or, on uh, uh using games uh, when learning english um, both uh uh, as somebody who advises clients on the next um, on, on on their English uh, uh, training and classes and helps them to find the best uh, class and course for them, and also somebody who's got lots of experience uh, specifically with uh, English uh, training as well. So thank you both, and uh, thank you uh, to our viewers uh, for your participation and joining us from different corners of the world and. Uh, we hope to see you soon. And uh, if you've got any um, questions about our courses, I would like to uh, learn more about them, then you can always find this information on our site, londonschool.com, or uh, contact us uh, either um, I, either through the contact form or uh, an email, clients at londonschool.com. And uh, uh, most likely, Sylvia might be the person <laughs> uh, helping you to find the right course for yourself. All right. right. So thank, thank you very much, everyone, and good evening. Yes, thanks very much, and thank you all for participating so actively. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.